Hey guys, welcome back. One of you had requested that I talk about button quail in one of my videos, and to be honest, I didn't think that I would be scheduling anything like that anytime soon, but it just so happens that I actually bought a bunch of button quail at the Bird Expo this past weekend. I didn't film my time there at the Bird Expo this year. I did film it last year when I went, so if you wanna check out that video, you can do so right here. It is pretty much the exact same thing as last year, which is why I didn't film it this year. So back to what I was saying. It just so happens that I bought a bunch of button quail chicks and it's just I could not say no to them and when you guys see them you're gonna understand why. This video is going to be about how to take care of button quail right after they hatch and then later as they start growing I'll make more videos about how to care for them. Button quail are incredibly tiny. I just can't get over how small they are. They look a lot like baby chickens but the difference is, is that they're just so much smaller. If you get button quail chicks it's important to remember to get a group. Button quail of course do want to be with a bunch of other button quail but it is a especially important to get several when you get chicks because they huddle together they're able to keep each other warm and they also learn to eat by watching each other they're gonna be more encouraged to eat when they see another chick pecking at something it's gonna make them want to peck at it too and they're just gonna eat more and there they are look at how tiny they are They are so tiny and so adorable. I'll pick one up so that you can see how little it is. See, they are so incredibly tiny. I had said before not to keep chicks in glass tanks, but however it is different with button quail because these glass tanks and plastic storage bins are actually going to be the best thing that you can keep the button quail in. They are so tiny and you don't want them to escape, so as long as you clean the brooder every day, a glass tank is going to work very well. The brooder does need to have a warm spot of about 95 degrees and then the other end of the cage can be a little bit cooler. That way the chicks can move away from the heat if they do get too hot. You can use a bulb from a home repair store or you can also get a bulb from a pet store for reptiles or birds. Make sure that the bulb is out of the reach of the chicks so that they don't touch it and burn themselves. The heat lamp should be placed over the tank like this. That's another reason why glass tanks are good to use because you can safely set them on the lid. If you have a lot of chicks, you want to make sure that the warm spot is big enough for them all to get under because if not, bigger chicks will push the smaller ones away from the heat source. A very important thing for your brooder is going to be the bedding. I think that wood shavings are too big for them at this age, so paper towels really do work out the best. You do not want to leave the brooder without anything covering the bottom because the chicks will slip and this will cause them to have spayed legs and also other problems with their hips that will start deforming as they grow. So you want to make sure that there is something covering the bottom. Do not use newspaper because not only is it toxic, it is also slippery so it's not going to make it any better for them and they're still going to slip. Paper towels are really the easiest choice to go with and they just need to be changed daily. These little chicks may be small, but they do poop a lot. When watering them, you want to use either a water dispenser that has a very small area where the water comes out or just a jar lid. Do not put a bowl of water in the brooder. This will easily cause for the chicks to drown or they will become too wet and they will get pneumonia. Right now I'm using a top from a water bottle for them to drink out of. If you have a larger lid than this, you are going to need to put rocks in it so that when they step in it, they don't get all wet because that will cause for them to get sick. You want to give your chicks a game bird starter. These have higher proteins than your chick starters and are better for them. However, if you cannot get them a game bird starter, you can give them the chick starter, but you will need to add extra protein to it. You can ground up a hard boiled egg and mix it in with their food, or you can also get a very high quality cat food and ground that up. You want to make sure that the cat food has 30% or higher protein, and you want to make sure that the food is small enough for them to eat. For example, I'm using this starter here and it actually is too big. So I'm going to use this pestle and mortar to ground it up more. So now that I use that to grind it up, you can definitely see a big difference. And that right there is the regular version. So you can see that those pieces are a lot bigger than this, which I have pretty much turned into powder now. 
Another reason that paper towels work best is because you can spread the food all over it. And as you can see, I just gave them their food and I spread it everywhere so that they have lots of areas to peck at and they will end up eating some of the food. If you notice that your button quail are not eating, you may have to teach them how to eat by tapping your finger on the ground and they will think that you are trying to peck at something and they will be encouraged to peck at it as well. The other thing that you can do is you can also get an older chick and stick it in there with them and when that chick starts pecking at things, they're going to see that and want to peck at it also. And it does not have to be a button quail. You can even get a baby chicken to put in there with them. Just make sure that it isn't going to peck on them. The chicks should be kept in a brooder like this until they are fully feathered. And as they grow, we're going to be learning more about how to care for them. So be sure to subscribe to see more videos on button quail and also videos on all other types of animals. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!